So in this presentation, what we're going to look at now, this is the third in our series on hierarchical clustering with R. Uh, what we've done previously is we had a look at distance matrices and uh, distance measures such as like Euclidean distance. We also, in the second presentation, we look at standardization and scaling and stuff like that. This time what we're going to do is look at linkage. So we're going to start off again with the distance matrix, or actually, sorry, as I call it here, the proximity matrix, the distance matrix, same, proximity matrix, same thing. So uh, what we're going to do here is actually sort of look at one particular linkage method, and it's called the nearest neighbor. Now, there's actually other ones here, but uh, other types of linkage methods. But what we're going to do is just actually have a quick look at this one for 10 cases okay so uh, this is a 10 by 10 for uh, this is a proximity matrix now those are the distance measures for 10 uh, observation uh, 10 cases okay so what happens at nearest neighbor is that it looks for the pair with the two smallest uh, it's essentially the smallest distance between them Okay, so what happens here is it's going to scan through all these dis distances and look for the smallest value other than zero. Okay, there's zeros along the diagonal there, so apart from them. So it scans through them all and it finds that the distance between two, uh, sorry, uh, three and eight, uh, item three and item eight it has the smallest Euclidean distance that in terms of distance measures similarity according to how we've set it up these are the two most similar so it's going to sort of bracket them into this first subcluster they are the first linkage there it goes on like that it goes to the next uh, uh, closest pair and we find out that it is between 8 and 9 so essentially what we have here is we have a sort of little subgroup 3, 8 and 9 and they are very close together in terms of Euclidean distance. Now, as it turns out, three and nine are particularly close, but three and or nine and eight are close enough. These values are actually just randomly generated, just for the sake of exposition. Okay, so uh, that's will join nine to three and eight. Okay, uh, just actually while I'm on that topic, as I sort of said there, three and nine are not particularly close. So if other linkage methods would consider, uh, uh, if you're trying to link uh, 3, 8, and 9, it would consider the distance between 3 and 9, the distance between 3 and 8, and the distance between 2 and 8 altogether. Uh, that's actually a much better system of doing it, really. But it's the hardest one to explain. So like the average uh, distance uh, up there is actually quite high, uh, but... 20 something like that okay uh, that's a digression so it just actually for the look nearest two pairings and go from there so beyond that now the next nearest pair is 1 and 2 uh, 4.8 so this sort of 4.82 so this sets up a new cluster so we have 3 8 and 9 and 2 and 10 then it continues on 4.84 that is between 2 and 10 uh, so closest pair is sorry 1 and 2 uh, 4.82 and then 2 and 10 so now what we have down here is we got two more clusters um, uh, 3, 8 and 9 and then 1, 2 and 10 and after that what is going to happen is we are going to add in 5 because the next nearest pair uh, neighbours are 2 and 5 so we have Two, five, uh, 1, 2, 5, and 10. And essentially what happens is that it goes on like this until you uh, run out of pairings. Uh, and so what will happen here is that um, we end up with two clusters, as it just hap so happens that in this particular case... Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, the next closest pair, 6.472, uh, that join 7 and 10 so we have 1 2 7 and 10 there the next closest pair after that will be 4 and 6 uh, so we have 3 6 and 9 4 and 6 and 1 2 5 and 10 actually 7 should be in there as well 
So all cases are in clusters. There, that this is a tree cluster solution there. Okay, sorry, the seven is missing from that. Beyond that is the next closest pairing is one and ten. Now these are actually also already in a cluster there. This cluster here, so we can disregard that. That's what happens. That will actually happen. That the two uh, items that are already in a cluster will be will appear on this uh, agglomeration schedule. So you can just disregard it. And then after that, four and nine. So what happens there is that these two subclusters will get added together, leaving us with leaving us with a two cluster solution, three, four, six, eight, and nine, and one, two, five. Sorry, there's a little typo there. Seven should be in there as well, and ten. So that would be a two cluster solution. So it's all based on this sort of stuff there. This uh, cluster, this uh, distance matrix. Now. That was the nearest neighbor. It actually finds the two nearest values and just sort of adds them. Um, if you're the nearest neighbor to one that's already in your cluster, you're adding uh, you're added into that cluster. So that is the uh, uh, nearest neighbor technique. So how do we do that with R? So what I have is I am going to set up this distance matrix here uh, with uh, 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 R. Okay, so what, how do I do this first? Actually, it is something I sort of skipped over in the past, actually. I think I should just make sure I have it done now. Is that I have... I'm going to use cars. Cars use. That's the data set I'm working with. Okay. And what I'm going to do there is create a distance matrix uh, using this dist command, the D-I-S-T, okay, that sets up my little matrix there, okay, it's sort of gone out of shot because it's actually quite large, there we go, that's the first page of it there, okay, uh, what I could do is uh, look at the help file and actually see how we might use other distance matrices, so let's do that, our distance measures, if just bear with me a second, this the default setting is the Euclidean distance. But what I might try and do is just see how I might use different distance measure. There's actually about five or six of them, maybe seven or eight of them in R that you would use. Uh, that's just taking its time there. I'll just come back to that. Um, so let's just actually while I'm waiting for that to work. Uh, so what we're going to do is we essentially construct a distance matrix with this that command dist okay and to set up hierarchical clustering we use this command hclust so what we do here is we provide the distance matrix that we would have created earlier on so here we go here's the uh, help file for uh, dist I'm going to just make that a little bit bigger easier to read oops but probably a bit too big so essentially what we have here is dist just the name of the matrix, the, the the or sorry, the name of the data frame of all numeric variables, and then the uh, type of measure we are going to use, the type of dis, uh, distance measure. Let's just have a quick look at the other ones there. So we have Euclidean, Maximum, Manhattan, Canberra, Binary, Minkowski. Uh, there's a couple of other ones there. Essentially, I'm not really going to look at any of the other ones there. I'll tell you what, just I'll just briefly have a quick look and see if we could try out using the other method Canberra. So let's go back here. Uh, method equals I don't re I, I'm not really that sure how what Canberra does to be quite honest with you. So or why it's different from Some of these might be used for, for example, natural sciences. They actually sort of make sense in terms of natural sciences. So the Canberra distance might be used in zoology or something like that, and it might there might be a sense to it or city city block distance. So those are the Canberra measures, uh, distance measures as opposed to as opposed to the Euclidean distance measures. So we're just going to stick with Euclidean. There we go. That's the Euclidean distance. There. I'm going to save that as cars dot dist and again if you're unfamiliar with R that cars dot dist doesn't really mean anything it's sort of similar looking to the type of things you might do in Python but it's not doesn't have the same significance 
Uh, okay. And the command that's the help file. So what we're going to do now is we will look at how to create a clustering solution here. So cars.hclust. Okay. And let's look at that. So cars.hclust. That's the distance. Uh, that's that's what it looks like there. It's actually not much of an. Um, it doesn't look like much actually. So we might try and get a summary of it. Just tells us a few things. Get the names. Uh, so far so good. Let's see uh, labels. I actually might be interested in this. Nothing. All right. So really, essentially, what I'm getting at there is there's not really much to look at yet. So what we're going to do, uh, we've we're going for the default method of hclust, which was to update the distance matrix using complete linkage. Actually, that's something we should look at. Actually, so I, I, let's go to the help file here again, and just sort of see what other linkage methods we can use. This matter of linkage is quite important, and it's one of the hardest things to explain, really. So there's other types of linkage methods, and it's essentially I talked about the nearest neighbor there earlier on, but I, I sort of might have suggested that it is not perfect. So. There's other linkage methods here. For example, there's this thing called Ward's D linkage. I might just sort of see how we might use that instead. So let's go back here. Method equals Ward D linkage. There we go. So I might have a different sort of way of adding the um, or a sort of assigning new values to existing clusters. So rather than nearest neighbor, which is two uh, uh, values, and just sort of see which two are nearest together, is Ward's D linkage will actually look at the group overall, and sort of see which group should I add this to. Okay. Uh, if so, for example, if you have a, a subcluster of two and a subcluster of three and a third subcluster of four, it sort of determines which is the best. Shall I add this subcluster of two? to for example the subcluster of three or should I add it to the other one the subcluster of four so it's actually a much more holistic approach it's actually much more computationally intensive though so it's harder to explain uh, I'll actually talk about it later on actually it just needs a full discussion each one of those needs a full sort of discussion in its own right so uh, the default method of uh, R for H cluster is the thing called complete linkage Okay, uh, for example, you could actually use Ward linkage there as well. Uh, these are all the agglomeration schedules, or linkage schedules, linkage methods uh, used by HCLUST. So single, the nearest neighbor one, complete, furthest neighbor, or compact, uh, the default one. Um, Ward's minimum variance method, and there's two of them. Uh, Ward's minimum variance the other one, the McQueating method, the average similarity, median, centroid, flexible. I'll be honest with you, until you get good at this, uh, I'd sort of stick with complete or wards distance or nearest neighbor and just sort of stick with that. That's enough of that. The next thing we're going to talk about is dendrograms, which is how we sort of might look at what we're doing. Because uh, so far, all we have is we've got something like this. And really, Oops, that's really not really interpretable yet. So that's enough of this. Let's uh, get on to the next presentation.